in heat. Hi, glad. Well, the heat is on. Demo's co-founder David Callahan says now is not the time to hurt seniors with Medicare cuts. But in the scheme of things, David, are we really talking cuts? We, you know we're not. We're just curbing the growth. If that's cuts, then I could say that if I don't gain 20 pounds in a year and just 10, I've cut my weight. You know, I haven't. Well, Neil, you're talking about uh, these people who want to cut Medicare, the Republicans, as if their profiles encourage. In fact, you know, these same, the same cast of characters will not talk about any kind of serious revenue. And you know as well as I do that long term, to deal with this uh, fiscal challenge, we need both serious revenue and some cuts. This union pushback is sending a signal that it's not okay to be, uh, uh, in fact, trying to keep these big tax cuts for the rich, even as we're cutting Medicare for well, seniors. Well, uh, you and I might part company as whether it's gutsy to, to raise taxes in an environment like this or at a time we have a society overtaxed as it is. The very Neil, upper taxes are included. at the low, lowest level in 60 I, I, years. I, I know a you want them to be higher and they, they should be higher and historically they're not high enough. I know that was their government. What I'm saying to you is what, what is wrong with calling a spade a spade? Looking aside from revenues, just looking at these programs and the trajectory they're on and say that if you want to rein in that growth, if you want to, for those not immediately getting Medicare, not immediately getting Medicaid, not immediately eligible for Social Security, you are just looking at trying to make sure and protect all of these services so that they can. It, it, there's no question we need to rein in the growth of these programs. It is a non-starter to be talking about that without also be talking talking about raising revenues uh, why, through, through why? tax hikes on the rich. That is a central point why, here. Why, why is it a non-starter when the because last time not, I checked, we don't have a problem with money coming into Washington. We have a far bigger problem with money leaving it. Neil, it's not serious politics to say, hey, you Democrats, you should make all the concessions. You should accept big cuts in social insurance programs, but we're not going to accept well, any major revenues. you just said big cuts in social insurance programs as if that's by divine right or happening now. None of the issues that I've seen dealt with are approach, approach big cuts. And you and I know that the kind of cuts they're looking at, which is an oxymoron, mean that over the next 10 years, we're still going to have $9 trillion more in debt. We're still going to have a Medicare system that is double the size it is now, a Medicaid system that is triple the size it is now. So, so if that's cutting, then, then, then dive me in. That's a diet I want. Well, part, partly this is about sort of tone and sort of what's being put on the table. I think it is hard to get any kind of a, a real sense of compromise here when it's such an unbalanced approach, when all the uh, attempts to, re to, to deal with the deficit are in the form of insurance, social insurance cuts. You know, I should also say, by the way... Well, actually, they're that, not. That actually, the, they're that, not. They're on defense. The, I mean, if the, you have the sequestration cuts go in, you yeah. get cuts in entitlements, Democrats don't like, you have cuts in defense, Republicans don't like. So it's fair to say that there's sort of universal uh, pain going on here, if that's how you want to describe it. All I'm saying is, if this is the tough part, if we're talking about $1.3 trillion over 10 years, and this is the tough part, and we're still piling on close to $10 trillion, more in debt, and enlarging all these programs I, I pointed at the beginning, and that's tough? Show me easy. Well, I think that if we, you know, repeal all those Bush tax cuts and make the kind of uh, uh, deep cuts in defense spending that Simpson Bowles and others have talked about, all including of them. the You're gang of six, not just the upper income. You want it, all of them? It, a trillion dollars in defense spending cuts in the next decade, four trillion dollars in new taxes by repealing those uh, uh, Bush tax cuts. That Bush makes tax the cuts kind, for that, who? Just the makes, wealth. That makes, the the kind of pay, that makes the kind of wait pain. Minute, wait, wait, wait. Bush tax cuts just for the wealthy. Repeal the Bush tax cuts just for the wealthy. Repeal them for everybody. Okay, uh, Alan right, Greenspan, well, I think, is right on this point. Right, that, well, look, you're consistent the, on that. Those, those, those tax cuts were meant to be temporary back in 2001 because there was a thought, well, maybe we want to be able to afford well, them minute, as we know, went into David, an era with the boomers retiring. Wait, wait, wait. Think about what you're saying. And you're very smart. You know this stuff very well. Why are tax cuts temporary but spending not? Well, I mean, look, the, the reason spending is going up on these social insurance programs is because we have 70 million boomers retiring. And the reason those Bush tax cuts were supposed to be temporary is because there's the thought of, hey, we it may not be able to afford those. It wouldn't matter if we gave those. all those tax cuts back. You're talking about 70 million boomers retiring. The fact of the matter is, if you want to protect it for just the latter part of those boomers and their kids and their grandkids, and then not sort of electrocute the ones who were trying to find ways to extend the lease on life of these very programs, then, then you have to consider some of the things they're considering, right? I, I believe we live in a very wealthy society. We could 
increase the percentage of uh, government spending as a part of the economy to get closer to some of those European levels? You know, right, I, you I think that we're, Europe, we're David. If you looked at Europe. That would be oh, like yes, making me the, chairman of Bally's uh, Fitness. Do you want to see that? Do you want uh, do you want Europe to be the example? Hey, Neil, Germany has lower unemployment. Sweden has higher growth. That's Germany it. Did you see export. what's happening to them? They're imploding faster right now than, than we have ever seen. There's growing talk among uh, many ratings agencies, Fitch investors among them just today. Germany is running could be an facing export, a export surplus. You Germany. Know, I think that's you just mentioned one. Germany. Sweden's economy grew at twice the rate of the U.S. Swedish last year. bond yields were rocketing today. Finnish bond yields were rocketing today. The Norwegians don't know what hit them. These are all sound countries. You're right, economically sound. They're all getting caught up in the same socialist contagion that investors are selling off on. Well, back to the U.S., I think that long term, you know, paying for this retiring boomer generation is going to be expensive. It was expensive to put them through school, to build all those roads and schools, you know, when they were kids. It's going to be expensive for them to retire. We have You're to not accept a boomer, that as a basic reality. You're not reality. a boomer, are you? No, I'm not a boomer. Okay, so you just hate my generation. All right, uh, Dave, it's always a pleasure seeing you. Um, Great to be here, Neil. But you're out to destroy the world. You know that. Uh, <laughs> Dave, I'm kidding.